We're going to wrap up this season of Answers videos now. It's time to move on to other things, other topics, and other series. It's been a very interesting season though, I think, this one. We've had lots of good questions, lots of varied questions over the past few months. I hope you've enjoyed getting into these topics. I know that I certainly have. We've looked at a whole variety of things, whether it be revivals, denominations, hearing from God, baptism, messianic Judaism, issues around pork and shellfish, the Sabbath, demon self-defense, just lots of variety on often quite deep topics as well. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who has participated in the season by sending in your questions. It's very much appreciated. And also to those who've gotten involved in the comment sections and who've brought your own insight and wisdom into these topics as well. Again, it's very appreciated. I really appreciate people who are engaging and participating in this channel. Thank you so much. I hope it's been a helpful journey to people that have been watching along as well. We've already gone on a little bit longer in this season than what I would normally do. Normally each answer season is about 20 episodes long. This one's already episode 22. But before we move on, there are still so many questions left in my inbox. I thought I'd use this last episode to just try and run through and acknowledge as many of those as I can before we finish. Apologies if I still haven't got to your one yet. Apologies if going through them too quickly throws up more questions than answers. Maybe this won't be a helpful video at all. But I think some of these remaining questions can be answered quite quickly. So that's what I intend to do in this final episode. So let's just crack on with it. Janine writes, are we to follow the Old Testament feasts? I think we covered that one a few episodes back when discussing Messianic Judaism and the Sabbath. I talked about her attitude towards the Jewish feasts there. So I think I can quite quickly just say, refer back to episode 13, I think it was. And that sort of gives my sort of input on that question. I should have probably included that question when I was doing episode 13. Sorry about that. Marsha and Yong have both written about 1 Corinthians 11, which talks about women wearing head coverings during worship. Marcia writes, with regards to 1 Corinthians 11, does that mean that women have to wear a hat to church? And how about when you cut your hair short? Does it mean you won't go to heaven if you don't? So head coverings in the Bible is supposed to symbolize a leadership structure that God has placed in the church and in the home. And the reason that I'm setting this one aside for the moment is because it really deserves a whole series. I think if we got into this topic, it would lead to very important and topical questions. It would open up a whole can of worms, basically, is what I'm trying to say about marriage, about parenting, about leadership structures in the church and home, about feminism, the postmodern hatred of patriarchy, female pastors and elders. It just really opens up all of these really massive topical discussions. And that's actually where Jan comes in. He says, I wish you would speak a little slower. <laughs> so for, I apologize for that, first of all. I'm often quite conscious, actually, about whether my Scottish accent is an issue for people around the world where English isn't their first language or even in places where English is your first language. But I hope it's not an issue. But then he writes, I am struggling to know the truth about women pastors and elders. Basically, how do you interpret 1 Corinthians 11 about women's roles in the church and home? It seems clear to me, but some strong believers and churches that I know believe this was just a cultural problem of that age and that women can be pastors and elders in this age because Christ finished everything. So there's a lot to dig into here, as I'm sure you can see. But I just wanted to say, I see these questions. I acknowledge these questions. I will get to these questions. I will do a whole series about these issues one day. And I apologize for the way I know that we've had emails about this. And I've apologized for how long it's taking me to get to this. But I'm actually beginning to feel like one lifetime won't be enough to cover all of these areas that I'd like to cover. But I do feel that a series is the best way to get into these particular issues. Natalia asks about the mark of the beast and says, I just finished reading the book of Revelation and I'm so confused. It says there that everyone is going to get the mark, but it also says that if you do, you're going to hell. I'm just so confused and conflicted. I don't want to get the mark, but it says he required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given the mark on their right hand or forehead. Maybe I'm taking it in wrong. I feel as though the Bible is saying that everyone is going to get it, whether they want to or not. But if you do, you're going to hell. So is anyone going to be saved other than babies? So it's true that the one world order will eventually become established and then rising to the top of that will be this character called the Antichrist who will mandate that you take this mark and if you don't, you will be shut out from society. However, that being said, you can refuse to comply. You can say no to this. There'll be consequences if you say no. You'll be persecuted and shut out of society, as I've said. You won't be able to buy or sell or have a job, so getting food becomes an issue. 
You won't be able to get a bank account or a mortgage, so having a house will then become an issue. It may mean having to leave populated areas and go live in the wilderness somewhere, growing your own food, living off the land. It may mean hiding from authorities. It may mean imprisonment or death. But the choice will still be yours. Just because the government mandates something, it's still up to you whether you'll actually comply with that mandate. You know, when the Nazis started mandating all kinds of evils in Germany in the 1930s and 40s, it was still up to each and every person whether they'd actually comply with that mandate. If they didn't, things got rough, like with Dietrich Bonhoeffer, for example, but you will still have that choice. Therefore, if anyone has the mark of the beast, it will be because they willingly chose to comply with the mandate. It's a bit like the COVID vaccine as well, when that was mandated in some places. Some chose to comply and get it, some chose to reject it, and they were threatened with all kinds of consequences. They were threatened with being shut out of society, but they still had that choice whether to comply or reject. And that's kind of what it's going to be like with the mark of the beast. You can comply with that mandate or you can use civil disobedience and reject it. And I think what COVID really highlighted was just how many Christians struggle with this idea of losing their social status as a pillar of society, going against the government, going against all that peer pressure, withstanding all of that peer pressure. But when this comes to pass, that's exactly what Christians are going to need to do. They'll need to be able to disobey the government mandates and be willing to be a social outcast, to bear that shame, to suffer all of the consequences for Jesus' name. I recommend watching the Fuel Project Revelation Guide if you want to learn more about that. That was a series we did a few years ago and it goes into Revelation in more detail. Rachel writes about the same subject saying, do you think civilization will correct from its current course towards the far left? Do you think we're heading for the authoritarian technocratic mark of the beast system and the end? This question was in response to the Trench series where I said there that if we carry on our current trajectory with far left ideas reigning supreme, it seems that that will eventually create the kind of world described in Revelation, the end time world which is in place prior to the return of Jesus, this authoritarian one world system. Now, do I think that we're on the home stretch now? Do I think that we're getting very close to that end or will we course correct in our generation and will that actually happen much further down the line? The answer to this is, I just don't know. I don't know how close we are to the end. I think we're always to live as though it could happen at any moment. I think we're to live with a keen eye on the signs of the times and to be alert, but I genuinely don't know just how long there is left on the clock, so to speak. What I've always said and what I maintain is that we're not really in the absolute end game until a one world order is established. When you see a one world government, that's when you know we're really on the verge of things. And I don't think a one world order will come until the current world order collapses in some way. So what I'm really looking for right now is an economic collapse that completely destroys all the economies of the world or World War III. Historically, economic collapses and wars have been the triggers that have propelled us towards greater unification and globalization. So that's what I'm looking for to propel us in that direction again. When you see an economic collapse or a world war, there will be a huge blowout. All the current systems will collapse in some way. And then out of the ashes of that, you'll start getting leaders talking about building back better. Why go back to the old way, they'll say, when we could build a new vision for humanity. We have an opportunity to shape a new kind of world. Why go back to the old economic system when it caused that collapse? We need a new economic order. Or why go back to nation states when that caused all those wars? We need a new political order. They will see it as an opportunity to shape the world in their image. And of course, the WEF are already talking in these kind of ways. And a truly global government will then be created on the back of that. And then we're in the end game. The stage will be set for the Antichrist. Now, will this happen in our lifetime? I don't know. The WF are already talking about 2030 being a key year and creating a global government. So that'll be interesting when that comes around. But let's just keep an eye on the signs of the times and see what happens. And of course, subscribe to this channel because whenever something interesting happens along those lines, we'll be talking about it and I'll be bringing it to your attention. Okay, I'll leave it there, but please do keep on sending in your questions and I'll get to them in Answers Season 4. Uh, this season of Answers will now be made available for download at the website. Go to thefuelproject.org slash downloads if you want a personal copy of this season. What you always say is, if you're a Christian, don't take the internet for granted. Don't bank on having access to these videos online deep into the future because you never know when big tech or 
social media companies or governments could suddenly pull the plug on all this and decide it's hate speech or something. That could happen at any moment. So if you want guaranteed access to these videos or indeed any series from The Fuel Project, I would encourage you to download them as soon as possible to your computer to get your own personal copies. And you can do that through the website at thefuelproject.org slash downloads. I remember when the apologetics group suddenly ceased trading and it was no longer possible to get Fuel Project DVDs um, because they were our only partner. That was our only outlet for the DVDs. And I suddenly had this flood of messages from people saying, oh, we wanted those DVDs. But by then it was too late because they were our only partner. There was nothing that could be done about it. There was no way to supply them. So again, I would implore you that if you want guaranteed access to any of this in the future, don't rely on it being online. Downloads are the way to go. Get your own personal copies. Okay, I'm now going to go work on the next series. So there may be a short pause in terms of uploads for a while. Hopefully not, at least not for very long. Actually, I've got some... Uh, standalone videos that I want to get to so maybe there won't be a pause but either way I'll be back with the next series hopefully as soon as possible.